Greetings! In today's video, I'm happy to bring you more beautiful things from the nice folks at Paul Rubens. They kindly sent me this pack of cotton sparkly watercolor paper, a watercolor palette of 48 colors, two travel brushes, and a set of studio or regular brushes. Let's take a first glance at all of these. The regular brushes are really interesting. There are four of them. The first one I grabbed is this wide brush with long hair. It seems to be natural hair. It came really carefully packaged in its own protective sleeve. The second brush is the largest of the remaining three. It has a relatively short tip and a very fine point. I can't tell more about the hair because it's still all glued together. The third brush is a medium brush with a tip not much shorter than the larger one I just checked out. It also has a really fine point. The last brush is quite small, more like a detailing brush. It has long hair for such a fine brush. It's kind of halfway between a liner brush and a small round brush. The travel brushes make me happy from the first glance. I just love that they are colorful and that it's two different colors, so it's super easy to tell them apart. The set also comes with a little pouch to carry them, which seems to be made from leatherette or fake leather. The yellow brush is the smaller one, a number two brush. The blue one is a number eight brush. They seem really nice, with a good shape and a good point. I took a look at the paper next. I was really curious to see what a sparkly watercolor paper looks like. I like how it's packaged, with the cardboard envelope and the plastic sleeve. I was glad to see that the sleeve wasn't taped shut, as it can be tricky to take sheets out when there's a sticky flap in the way. The sparkles are really cool. They are kind of subtle in shine, and larger than I thought they would be. I love that it's not an evenly pearlescent surface. The last item I took a look at is the palette. It comes in a cardboard box with the color list on the back. The palette itself has a gradient from pink to purple, and it's made from metal. The palette opens up, turning the lid into a nice white mixing area. In the palette, there's a swatch card and a little pamphlet. The pans are housed in a plastic tray, inserted in the bottom half of the palette. It is not the sturdiest of plastic trays, but not too flimsy either. There's a water brush included and a space for it in the tray. Also, there's a very handy plastic overlay with color names and pigment info. Now that all that is opened and unwrapped, I'll unglue brushes and paint swatches and I'll come back to talk about it. I started by painting the swatches in the card that came with the set. The paints re wet really well and the range of color is quite nice. 12 of the colors are FX paints, meaning they are either shimmery or sparkly. The range of colors is nice, there's a bit of a repeat color in the browns, but otherwise there's a good variety. The little pamphlet shows the colors included in the various sets and has some info, but I can't read it. I wanted to swatch the paints on cotton paper, so I took out this little book that has Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press paper in it. The paints look really nice on cotton paper. All the colors are quite smooth, there is not a lot of texture present. Even colors like ultramarine blue, which is usually granulating, are super smooth here. That would mean that they used a really finely ground pigment for this paint. I wanted to mention something quite unique here. On the plastic overlay with the pigment info, we can see that the violet red is made from PR88, and that the colors tree green, hooker's green, and deep hooker's green have PO49 in them. Why is this interesting? Well, both of these pigments have been discontinued, so they are no longer available. You can hardly find paints with these anymore, and if you do, it's either the rare old stock paint or handmade paints made from a small amount of found pigment. I'm not sure what's up with these here, but in any case, the colors are really pretty. Another little detail I wanted to mention is the discrepancy between the box and the pamphlet, versus the palette itself and the swatch card. The pamphlet and the box have a series of opera colors, which are not included in the palette. What is in the palette is a series of shimmer and sparkle paints. It's not an issue per se, but it can be confusing. Next, let's check out the brushes. The first one here is the largest of the three round brushes, if I can describe them as such. I did a page of tests, too, to see how it behaves. I really love this brush. It has a super fine point and holds a nice amount of paint. 
The hair is probably natural hair on account of how soft and absorbent it is. It's such a nice brush. It has no spring at all, as you can see. When the hair is wet, it stays in the shape you give it until you reshape it in one way or another. The second brush I tested is the medium one, with the red hair and the brown handle. This brush was super easy to control. I loved using it a lot too. This one also keeps a really fine point. Although it is slightly more springy than the previous brush, I'm fairly sure that this brush is also natural hair, probably dyed. It bounces back a bit more when dry, but when wet, it stays really soft. The third brush is the smaller one. It is super fine and keeps its point well. It can also make for a very nice line variation. Of the three, it's the one with the most bounce. It's still quite soft and also probably made with natural hair. What I love about all three brushes is that they are all similar in the length of their tips, but vary in width at the base. I find that that makes them easier to clean up as no paint gets too far up in the bristles. The next brush was super interesting to check out as I've never really used a brush like that before. It's also natural hair and they are separated into bundles to make for a wide flat brush. What I like the most about this brush is that I felt like it released the paint really evenly and smoothly. There wasn't a big drop of color at the start and then nothing. It was great to paint a large area and when flattened out it makes really fine lines. The last two brushes are the travel brushes, and I gotta say, I really love those two. They are good sizes, and they are really well made. They keep their point really well. These are made from synthetic fibers, which can be really seen from the spring that these have. They bounce back really quick and nicely, keeping their shape. They are great brushes. Like I mentioned, I also really like that they are color-coded. That's super practical. Using an assortment of brushes, I made a page of quick tests in preparation for the demo paintings I wanted to make. Also, I didn't test the water brush because I'm not familiar at all with these and I'm terrible at using them. And finally, the demo paintings. I did three. I took out two sheets of the paper and cut one in half with the intention of painting two smaller pieces and one larger. I really wanted to try and paint more flowers for these. I felt like that subject matter works well with the sparkly paper and the FX paints. The first piece I painted, I used light blues, light greens, and purples. I added shimmery paints where I felt it would look great. The second piece, I went for a more contrasty approach with pinks and greens. For the third, larger piece, I went back to a more analogous palette of yellow, orange, greens, and a hint of pink. Overall, I love the results I got. The paper itself is so nice. It took the paints with no issue, accepting layers and both wet and dry applications. The sparkly effect is great in my opinion, and I would absolutely use this paper on a regular basis. The paints themselves also layered really well. I painted some leaves on top of other dry leaves and it didn't affect the paint underneath. I was able to drop paint in wet areas and it mixed well. There's a few cauliflowers here and there, but they are from user error meaning I added in paint that was too wet on areas that were too dry. My favorite elements of this lot are the brushes and the paper. I also love the paints. They have beautiful greens and purple in the selection, colors that are often omitted from other sets. I'll have links to everything in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, I'm timing the release of this video with a really fun promotion from Paul Rubens, as it's their 12th year anniversary. They are having a lot of fun sales from June 15th to June 30th, so keep an eye out on their social media page for more details. A big thank you to Paul Rubens for sending me these great supplies, and a big thank you to you guys as well. Let me know what you think of the paints, the brushes, and the paper in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, thank you for watching. See ya in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.